Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming out to Tech Social. I'm Bob Pelly from Anovacorp. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, tonight we have Keith McDonald from the Cape Breton Partnership, and Keith is going to talk about uh, growing the um, um, ICT sector in Cape Breton. It's part of the uh, framework for prosperity that the Cape Breton Partnership is, uh, has, has put together to, to look at ways to, to grow the economy and uh, information and communications technology is a big part of that strategy. Um, Keith is the uh, executive director, no, oh, sorry, the CEO of the uh, Cape Breton Partnership. And I'm going to turn the floor over to, to you right now. Don't trip on the cords there, Keith. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Um, I think I know everyone except the two folks I just met. So now I know everybody for sure. I want to thank you for coming out for uh, uh, Tech Social. Uh, I got a little presentation just to go over. But first, uh, the Cape Breton Partnership, we're a private sector led organization. We have an office here in Sydney as well as in Port Oxbury. Uh, we're a membership driven organization. We have over 170 investors or members in the organization. They all contribute to uh, to the partnership and we utilize that funding to uh, to leverage dollars at the various levels of government to, uh, to develop programs and projects that address the, the needs of the private sector here in Cape Breton Mulgrave. Uh, we have a board of 20 individuals from across Cape Breton and they represent uh, various private sector uh, uh, industries from around the region and uh, we move our meetings around all over Cape Breton Mulgrave. It's a very diverse board as a, a wealth of knowledge and uh, I'm proud to be working for them. One of the projects the partnership is spearheading with a number of stakeholders in the region is called the, uh, the Cape Breton Island Mulgrave uh, Prosperity Framework. It's basically the first ever uh, pan Cape Breton Mulgrave uh, economic strategy. The partnership one underwent an 18 month uh, consultation piece, research piece to develop the framework and what it's all about is the to find our key strengths and opportunities for the region, what sectors are emerging, where should we be investing our, our uh, time and efforts into uh, building um, which sectors, uh, and then puts together a framework of, of all the economic development organizations that are in the region and what they're, they are responsible to leading or advancing. So from there we, uh, we identified a, a number of sectors that were uh, highlighted as emerging or, uh, cert or sectors right now that we have to maintain and, uh, uh, and stabilize. And we've developed sector teams around all of those. One in particular was the ICT innovation uh, kind of grouping of, uh, uh, of uh, companies and we have a number of those as you're all aware because a number of you are actually uh, running those type of companies that we feel that have a a real opportunity to move forward. Uh, so what we're doing as the next step is we're going to try to develop a, 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 a sector team uh, made up of individuals such as yourself that are going to really focus on the key uh, challenges that the sector is facing, uh, both short term and long term, as well as some of the opportunities. And instead of just uh, collecting that data and leaving that there, there on, a, on a table, we're going to work on an ongoing process that uh, we try to get rid of those challenges and we try to take care of, uh, take advantage of those opportunities that are before us. So uh, I wanted to get some feedback today. That was the point of the presentation in the chat today was to try to get some feedback from uh, the individuals in the sector as yourself. We've received some already to date and basically uh, we wanted to kind of put out there what some of the barriers to growth to the sector are. We've heard a number of these, such as uh, you know, the availability of skills, labor, human resources, uh, access to capital, uh, red tape, taxes, um, our bandwidth, all of those type of things. So uh, today I just wanted to do a little interactive uh, session and, and get some further feedback and try to narrow that down to like, what is our number one uh, challenge going forward and what is our, 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 our most significant opportunity for the sector going forward as well so that we can really channel and really focus going forward and, and not uh, try to have a, a wide, broad um, 
number of issues we're going to be facing or, or taking on uh, a more focused approach so that we can uh, clearly get rid of some of these challenges and uh, have all of your companies succeed on, a, on an annual basis. So that's kind of where we're at. I was going to leave it uh, this session. I'm not sure how the folks on the podcast, I'm sure Bob's figured out how they can interact. But for those who are here, by, based, by Twitter, by Twitter, using yeah. at TechSocialCB, and we've got uh, Darren is watching the uh, the Twitterverse to uh, to to uh, to watch for questions. So sure. So the the first step we're hoping to do is just take this very short list just to get your uh, uh, minds thinking about it and add any to them and then do some prioritization and uh, and then kind of at the end of the, the session I can leave here uh, with step one which is what what's our number one opportunity and what number one challenge we should be focusing on so I was going to kind of leave it I was going to do table discussions but since everybody's kind of out there uh, I think we can just leave it to an open discussion and let let people toss out some some additional challenges we may miss may have missed there and then uh, and then kind of narrow it down. Can I take an easy one? Sure. Every once in a while, uh, I'd like to be able to make the easy contribution. <laughs> Access to air travel is it's way ahead here. Like something has to be done about that. Like oh, we we have a lot of great assets here in terms of being able to access world markets and do business in world markets. Our particular business does require um, interaction face to face with our clients and potential clients. Flying out of Sydney to go anywhere has become a barrier in a big way. Um, and I don't know collectively if all of our you know, economic development agencies or our people can do something about that. It's you know it's definitely become a challenge. I mean, it shouldn't cost five hundred dollars to fly to Halifax, or you know, it shouldn't cost a thousand dollars to fly to Halifax for the day. Because basically, that's where it's at yeah. right now. And that's you know, we see, I see, you know, being here as such a great thing, and then you know, see Halifax International as such a launch pad to go pretty much anywhere in the world you need to be. But if we can't get from here to there in a reasonable way, you know. It's that hand. So I'd like to add that to the list of barriers. Thanks, Larry. I hate to talk about barriers, but that's oh, yeah. you know definitely become one for us. So we'll add that to the list, certainly. <coughs> can ever can they hear online? Hopefully. Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> Let's tweet it. You can tweet that uh, issue out there, Larry. <laughs> Okay. All right. There it says, "Choose politeness from Zoom." Please. So, Darren, you do you have uh, something there to add? Uh, I think a forum um, for bringing the sector together uh, would be a good mechanism to have in place. You know, so it's uh, we can actually identify who is in the space, and how we can help each other out. So, so something above and beyond the uh, that tech social where we. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, tech social is great, and but it, it uh, caters to different audiences depending on the you know the flavor of the presentation. Hello. But if there's a, a I don't know what kind of uh, formal setting you can have or informal, whether it's a discussion group, some sort of page, you know, something to uh, I guess unify it and bring a little bit a more formal approach because these can be hit or miss. If you're not here the you know, first Thursday, you may not know what happened. So more the next suggestion was to have the sector meet more formally um, to another type of forum. Either well, do we know everyone in the sector? I guess because there may be people that don't come to Tech Social. Oh, there certainly is. I mean, even with the, the hackathon announcement that we identified, but how many other people just? Suddenly appeared that we didn't even know yeah. about. So yeah, yeah. If you look at last month's attendees, for example, there was quite a different room than we had tonight. Yeah. yeah. I think we have a pretty good handle who's in the sector, but I'm 
That doesn't mean we have everybody, right? Well, maybe it's a directory for the sector. I may not know. George, we're just talking about uh, barriers to the kind of ICT innovation sector going forward, and then what opportunities we have that we should be focusing on too. So I'll give you one minute to think of something. <laughs> just to, to build on uh, the first two is it's expensive to go to a session and have sessions come in here. So have that expertise uh, come in here in five and five. What about training? Is that something that's coming up? Uh, I just know I just read the notes on the most recent provincial budget, and there's all kinds of new dollars put in there for for training, but it doesn't specifically go to any sector. Um, is that something we should be focusing on as well as maybe? Newcomers, we're just talking about opportunities and barriers for the sector. We're trying to prioritize kind of the one top one or two that we can really uh, focus on uh, over the next year. So, so Ian, you always have ideas, so I'm not going to put you on the spot yet. But I'll come back. I'll come back. I just want to get caught up where you're at. That's yeah, so that's where we're at. Thank you, Charles. You got anything to add? The uh, the air fear was, was that a barrier to what was going on? Oh, Richard, sorry, it's not Charles Gordway. Richard? Yeah, yeah, sorry. No, I think, I think, I think the one that we have gold with there is, is our biggest challenge is capital, working capital. Yeah. And, uh, and money to grow and develop. You know, we really, we traditionally have this, we have, we have systems in place to get us to the seed round and, and get us to there, that part, and then beyond that, so many businesses start with uh, involvement and they haven't been able to grow beyond that. So it seems once you have the prototype build and the product ready for market, then, then the next level up is a million to a million and a half dollars. It's difficult to find, and I know another part is in their, in their latest iteration, or addressing that more so, but that's still our that's the biggest challenge that I see for most businesses to get beyond that initial hump. Mm -hmm. So now what? How do we grow from here? That's the problem that we face. That certainly would be my if, if I was going to vote on what, the things on your screen. That would be my, my vote. Does the sorry okay, does the Atlantic venture the new venture yeah. yeah is that targeted at early stage startups <coughs> is that targeted at expansion or is it a wide it's a it's early stage but it would be growth ramp so okay. you're likely to see it at a Series B C as opposed to you know specifically what Richard's talking about I think in in exceptional circumstances. You'd see 
there might be interest there as well. And the innovation sector kind of fund we've talked about here locally, would that be for targeting early stage startups as well? Or addressing what what oh that's okay. Addressing the the uh, kind of expansion component or the next next step component for businesses. Um, I, I, I think it's even earlier. I think oh, yeah? it's the yeah. real you know real early stage just to get to get it rolling type of an initiative is what we've been talking about here at the community level. Yeah. So those Doug, we're having another input session, one of many that have happened before, but what we're trying to do is really nail down that like number one, two uh, challenge that we're facing for the sector. So we've heard uh, some that haven't been up on the screen here, uh, such as uh, uh, air access, uh, bringing the sector together in, a, on a, in another type of forum other than the, 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 uh, the tech social, uh, where we can have uh, try to have a broader uh, kind of mix of people coming in and, and interconnecting. And then also the idea that uh, um, that Alan already pointed out that I'll remember in a moment. <laughs> so Keith, I'll let you jump in while I'm remembering that. Um, for me, one of the things that seems to work at Cape Breton Island was always just think Cape Breton first. One of the problems that I see as a barrier in an IT company is let's get Nova Scotia to think first. I have a world-class reading and writing software that outside of the Maritimes in Ontario, it's the number one product, 95% of all school divisions. Not used in Nova Scotia. No matter how hard I try to rattle change with the Nova Scotia Department of Education and that, to say, hey, look at us, give us a shot, we're here, we employ people, we actually pay taxes, not like all the software you're buying from you know the estates and whatnot. I, I don't know where to go. Got all the economic development authorities and said, look, I'm not here for money. We're doing well elsewhere. How do I get you to open the door to my own government, my own people, my own people that live around to get them to believe in something we're doing so we can hire more and do better? It's been a huge barrier to my growth. Everybody's tipped, everybody wants to pass you money and give you here, apply to this funding program. No, we're doing well everywhere else but here. I'd like to do better here. I'd like to have more of a reason to stay here in Nova Scotia. Right now, my business was in Ontario. All of it. I hate to have to move there, but Nova Scotia is providing no reason other than the highest taxes in the country. And I guess you guys have all heard this before, but it's very frustrating when all economic development funnels down to here's some seed capital, here's a few little programs. No, I want contacts. I want somebody to look at us and take it seriously and say, here, let's open this door to this department so you meet the right person. I've gone through a whole ladder of people trying to climb to the top, and it's getting really frustrating. Air access, you hit, couldn't hit the nail on the head better. Unfortunately, working in a global economy, I have to go places from time to time. I can't do everything over the phone. I can't do it all over email. Getting on a plane in Sydney is the most expensive place in the world to fly out of. It makes no sense. I haven't got the time to spend five hours driving to Halifax and save 400 bucks, because that's what you save. There's a $400 difference flying out of Sydney. Why? Why are we putting some effort into making it more affordable? We have limited rail. We have no bus. If it's not a car or a plane, there's no way to get to this bloody place. So again, <laughs> do we have barriers? We got lots of barriers, but everybody seems to talk about capital and not some of the others. Infrastructure is huge. We have a roadway here. We have a plane that comes here three times a day if you can afford it, and that's it. Unless you come from Newfoundland, you come by boat. I'm sorry. I'm trying to think of ways to get here. There isn't many guys that I miss it. So worse. again, when I throw these things out there, there are barriers in a big way. If I got to fly to Toronto, every dollar that it costs me to get there, or I got to go to Chicago or whatever, it adds to the cost of everything of doing business. It makes it more expensive to do business in Sydney. Whereas even if I just picked up and I moved up to Halifax, I could save 400 bucks a trip. Mm -hmm. I was starting to look at the math about moving there as opposed to here already. So again, access to government, not funding. Real human beings that buy. Let's start a buy Atlantic, buy Nova Scotia kind of idea or a thought first. Then we'll keep business here, we'll keep jobs here. But I get this feeling whenever I deal with somebody local that, ah, you made it here. That can't be as good as something I can get from away. 
And that's, I'm getting sick of that attitude here. That's yeah, an you, issue. Deal. you know, it's an issue. I, am I my own take on that? It's Please. the mainstream market in here. I mean, it's like a graphics, right? There's the early adopters and your early majority and whatever. You know, face it, those in government in Nova Scotia, and with apologies to those who work for government and everything else here, okay? They're not the leading edge, psychographically, and they will never lead. And I can tell you horror stories about the Department of Education fighting Department of Public Works, small-minded personal battles, and uh, a simple high school, uh, high school in Halifax, uh, the most expensive high school, which spent more money to put in glass from Quebec than they would have had with ours. It was actually built for purpose. And then after that, it was a, it was a terrible mistake because their product was not even the right product for it. They had to buy blinds, doubling the price of their fiasco to up. kill the thing and kill the whole daylight. But anyway, you know, at some point you go, okay, it's Nova Scotia, they're laggards. And I look at it and I say, if you're expecting anything positive, go to the Nova Scotia government, have a look at them. Have a look at their balance sheet, have a look at their success rate, have a look at 100 years of economic development failure, and go, no, why do I live here? I live here because I like living here, number one. Number two, operating my business here is kick-ass. Because our business is operating people. We are able to recruit good people. It's hard, you've got to use a little more creativity to get them there. When you get them here, they stay. And we think it's an operating advantage, and our costs here and that kind of stuff are great. But if you want the Nova Scotia government to be progressive, you know, you can want, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, you know, seals to grow wings and fly up in the air or something like that, or yeah, fairies to, to go and everything else. And it's just not going to happen. So forget that one. Cancel it out. They're not going to this? That's right. all I want. I'm not asking for a solution. When they're asking for barriers to grow, one of our biggest barriers is our own government. Look, in my business, our government, as the Department of Education, spends $88 million per year on special needs. Guess how much my company gets out of that? Is my cup got in the air right now? Okay, 88 million is spent on technologies from abroad that do the same thing we do, not even good. I can't get the, them to entertain the idea of using a local company, but yet Ontario, 95%, we're the one that's number one in Ontario and Alberta. I scratch my head and I wonder, I wonder our test scores are so poor here and we keep failing. And I've got that's because the people. I'm sorry, I'm the, getting off track. With the people in the department didn't graduate from special needs. They couldn't make it over there. That's the I guess. Yeah. Again, here's, here's my frustration. I've got eight employees here that I want to keep here. I can't get my own government to seriously entertain working with us, but every other provincial government wants to work with us. So, yeah, that's a huge barrier. Right, yeah. Let's think Nova Scotia first. Let's think Maritimes first. Let's stop this baloney of the politics. I don't care what, I don't put a sign on my lawn, I don't care who's running the province, because I'm sorry they're all as bad as the other at the end of the day, so I don't play to the parties and the politics. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe i got to put a sign on my lawn to get a deal. Guys, help me out, how do you do You guys have all dealt with them, what do I got to do? You're laughing, but it's true. How do you deal with your own darn government? You wait, they're laggards, they'll deal after you've sold Ontario, and Alberta, and BC, and they look at it after all, they say, Gee, I think we're left out, but it'll be a, a long time because it takes the, the cycles long. And so, yeah, don't obsess on it. It's not not going to happen. They're slow. They'll be the last. I, I got to bring it up so Keith can at least put it in his report to see if there's something we can honestly do. Well, to, not to Greece. I'm not asking for a free ride. I'm asking for this. Everybody else is using this specific product. It got there some way, somehow. I obviously wasn't in business at the time, so I'm asking to come to the table as an evaluation tool and say, hey, you know, can we get a shot as well? Yep. That's all well, I'm asking. The, uh, the Commission on the New Economy for Nova Scotia is here today. We already met with them uh, twice, once yesterday in Port Oxbury and once uh, today here in, at the, the Hampton Inn. So there's a community session at 7. Right after this. Yeah. So I'll, I'll bring that as an issue. It hasn't come up yet in the two sessions, so that's something that we'll I'll talk to the devil himself, Keith. You know that. Oh, yeah. As long as I feel I'm going to make progress. I know that your group is doing some, making a difference. That's why I came tonight. And I did notice this is something that's not being addressed at all. Yes. There's a lot of our companies here that could benefit from working with our own government because, let's face it, they're going to buy product anyway. Why can't they look to us first before they look off the province, off whatever? You yeah, want us to live and stay and pay tax, give me a reason to be there. And it's not just this sector, too, that we're that, that comes up from time to time, that whole procurement piece, even on a municipal level, it, it comes up as well. That, you know, why aren't we looking at the municipal unit 
They were in the same class at school that they filled out of. But anyway, yes, that will be highlighted nice and big and bright Thank you. along with capital. So anyway, we've covered, we got any more challenges? And I remembered what the balance was that, was that we should have uh, bring in some speakers that are, uh, some high-end speakers that are involved in the sector, kind of on just not only just a, uh, uh, just to get people motivated that are in the sector, but possibly are leading edge in, in, a, in a component of the, of the sector so we, we can build off some of their ideas and experience. So, does that sound like what you said, Alan? Okay, good. You have covered the uh, shipping, overnight shipping? No, we didn't bring it up again, um, but uh, that was one of the things I still wanted to kind of hear back from folks if that's improved any at all, or is it regressed, or it's basically the same? No, and I don't. I personally do not understand. Okay, back in the 19th century and 20th century, rail and ships moved products, the, the, the key products in the economy, right, the, the high value stuff. Now it's kind of moved to things like talk about cars and airplanes and things like that that move product. And uh, we're good to subsidize the 19th and 20th centuries and work on that, but uh, you can't get overnight shipping out of here, and boy, boy, it's difficult to tell people. It's a very difficult conversation to have with people across North America, that they say, yeah, I want your stuff, uh, in our case, saving somebody's ass, yeah, we'll make that for you, and it's, it's out of the plant tomorrow, ready to ship. And they go, great, and get it the next day. No, you can't. Oh, yeah, no, no, you can just go to FedEx. No, no, we can't go to FedEx. You can't even explain it to people in the mainstream economy. And why we have an obsession about subsidizing 19th century industries, okay. and we cannot get over it? Come on, for God's sake! You know, like snap to it. We've been talking about this for years, and nothing happens. And it's like seriously, it's embarrassing. Okay, it costs squat to fix it, and we can put millions and tens of millions into the 19th century. We can't even get to the friggin' 20th century in this place. For God's sake! Come on. Smart enough. So tell them that for me, Keith, will you? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thank you. I will, yeah. I'll even try to get more riled up. I'm, 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 I'm not the most energetic speaker, so i gotta get, I got to amp it up a bit. So. so those are the main points, Keith, that are on your slide right there. That, uh, that was just to get the discussion okay. going, right? There's none, no one comprehensive. I, I missed the beginning. That's why I'm just curious. No, I just... Just threw some up there just to get the, the dialogue going. So we've already got a lot of good input. I knew as soon as folks came in the room, it'd be like double up on. I was issues. I was cracking again. <laughs> I wanted to hear what was in the report. So Keith, did you, uh, the other thing, cut to the chase in this yeah, whole yeah. thing. If you have more companies being born, yeah. they end up dying. Your economy is going to grow over time. It may not happen right away, but it'll 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 happen over time. And. And so if you get enough startups happening, I'm sure this has been discussed, then uh, you've got you know stage, right? So we got a bunch of startups, some of them die, they become early growth, later growth companies, and everything else. And we have very few startups, and talk to Bob about this, no corp, great, I love your I3 thing. Put five companies a year, not one company every few years, right? And then you'd actually have an impact and be relevant, right? And at one company every couple of years, it's not particularly relevant. A bunch of startups going, and if you don't get companies starting, starting or coming in, we're dying. Plain and simple. The math is that simple. It's no more complicated. Any idiot can understand that. Right? You got to get stuff either started or moving in. So figure it out. We can't get them to move in. It's pretty tough. Start them. Not too difficult. Why does somebody do that? That's right. Because our government's not helping us grow, but buying from us. <laughs> so there's either going to be new guys coming in. Otherwise, this, this economy will die here eventually. So on the opportunity side, is that where our focus should be? Is like trying to make that path a lot easier for the startups? It's been the one thing around here that seems to go and you know, grow roots and move upwards. And uh, the old importation approach. Yeah. How many, you know, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars have been spent in that? And look around and try to see something. The companies left and they're not there, right? Yeah. You look around and you see companies that have started up here, innovation based, real competitive advantage. Yeah. That can operate against 
the barriers we have here. Seems to do okay. And I've been an advocate along with other people around here of uh, well, let's get a bunch of startups going. And uh, government could play a role and do something useless or useful, but they uh, you know have resisted for you know 15 years of uh, doing that. Like slow hanging fruit, it's easy. Cost squat. You don't have to put 40 million dollars into something or you know 75 million dollars or anything like that. It's like half a million a year or something like that. You get five startups off the ground, right? Some will swim, some will sink, and it could be done in a heartbeat in an instant. Yeah. And it'd be a thread. You know, it doesn't preclude any other anything else. You know, it's, uh, but I do not understand why. You know, the powers to be wish to waste their economic development money as they do and make sure it gets all pissed away with no effect. Which is, you know, I say that and look around, right? We are. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right, just to follow up, uh, yeah. Ian and Beth uh, was saying, like, the question that comes to my mind, kind of, since everybody was starting to speak of strongly yep. conviction that the attitude of the provincial government for a good while has been uh, anti business startup. Uh, I, for one, do not believe that you can uh, expect any individual or any organization, uh, no matter how well the government organization or individual, uh, you cannot expect the person who is delivering a negative message to change their attitude. It has to be changed by an intervention from someone who observes and understands that this person, that organization, is negative and are interfering with the development of this community uh, and this business. Therefore, it is up to us, the local people, to say, look, we must begin a serious uh, effort to change the negative uh, attitude of government and others of the negative attitudes that are work at every level of government we're talking about distribution. But it happens to But uh, specifically the very provincial government, we should be uh, looking at uh, going in public uh, with what is stated here. But in a respectful, responsible, um, continuing fashion. Is yeah. that the way I put it? <laughs> lighten it, we'll lighten it, pull it back just a little bit, just a smidge. Sorry, Paul, go ahead. Thanks, Aura, that was great yeah. input. Yes. Uh, but there are a number of people in this room that I recognize who were instrumental back in the 90s when ECBC adopted the, the ICT Entrepreneurial Initiative. We led to, for a <coughs> negligible amount of money, the establishment of a dozen or more small IT companies. And then you watch what happened. While, when we were, which were always the head of Media Fusion, when we were the leading and original uh, producers of multimedia products in Nova Scotia, there was a report put out by uh, a co-op, which never mentioned, uh, which had put out the money for a lot of the work, never mentioned the word about okay, Kipchak at all, Halifax, 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 and hardly any of them were actually doing multimedia. They were established PR. Yep. Uh, the second thing was that when Matt and Richard and, uh, was it DJ or JD? JD. JD. Yeah. JD uh, were so successful in getting the uh, 
ultimately Quebec International New Media Festival going. When we were on the international radar, when Disney and German firms and Brazilian firms were flocking here every fall, what happened? ECBC sabotaged, let us down the garden path, and then, like Lucy pulling the football out of the front of uh, Charlie Brown, they yanked the money away and gave two million dollars to Scottsburg for a machine to put milk into plastic cartons. And Scottsburg isn't even a, a Cape Breton company, and ECBC is illegal, was illegal in doing that. And then later, when the when the um, when the Cape Breton growth fund was put forward, nobody wanted to be part of the consultation. They said it's just a farce. They already know what they're going to spend the money on and it's going to be their cronies from Ottawa or from wherever and we're all going to get screwed over again. You know, they'll shut it down and take the equipment the day before they open the doors and start hiring Cape Breton employees. I stuck my neck out and said let's give it a chance. This is a lot of money not that much, but a hundred million dollars essentially. And if we come up with some good ideas, maybe they will give us enough of it that we can take the lead. Well, I don't need to tell Doug and Matt and Richard and some of the others what the hell happened. Yeah. The chairman of the Growth Fund Board, uh, John McClennan, who had just happened to be the chairman of uh, the telephone company, the Bell Company, companies, told them, oh no, we're not going to give any money to local companies. We know we're going to bring in companies that will create jobs. And of course, they reminded them of our 30 or 40 years of bizarre, uh, you know, enticing companies to come only to see them go. And he said, oh no, they didn't know what the right companies were. I do. And guess what they were? Companies that used Bell services, call centers. Now, in fact, they probably are the only thing that is left over. Yeah, so strange. why they had to spend a hundred million dollars to bring in a bunch of call centers uh, makes no sense at all. And the rest were just, I mean, just crazy. Yeah, all mostly gone, mostly gone, and they, they need a new subsidy to keep going. Yeah. yeah. So Paul, on that new that new media stuff that was happening in Bedeck, right? So that's gone to Banff. It was right. deliberately sent to PEI, yeah, but sabotage, yeah, well, went to PEI. not invented oh, here. Did it? Yeah, yeah. Went to it went to PEI and then eventually it, uh, they ran for a couple of years and then it was sold to Ben. Oh, they so sold it? They patched it up and sold it? And guess where Rick Brent Beaton was from? PEI. Oh. Although he didn't make that decision. Oh. You know, anyway, yeah, we, that's, that's a long... We don't need to okay, all right, I don't, I don't want to dwell on it, but is there... Here's the point. I'm okay, sorry. We can talk all we want, yep. but we're going to be told every time that the provincial government comes out with another report, whether it's uh, a professor from Moncton or whether it's a, somebody, from a, a bureaucrat from Halifax, we're going to be called, called, told we're a bunch of whiners. But what can you be when you see one study after another doctored or slanted to ignore us or put us down? And, I mean, I can name you specific cases. And then you have Tom Traves, the president then of Dow Tech, or whatever it's called, and now then became Dow Housing, saying that the rest of Nova Scotia, outside of Halifax, was a black hole for economic development, and the province shouldn't waste any more money on it. Now, if you cannot break through that establishment, that mirrored silo, in which the establishment of Halifax sits and, and pats each other on the back and puts their hand in each other's pockets, you can't work, you can't do anything. You've got to break through that. We have a newspaper that will not mention anything about equalization, even though we've told them about it. We got a Halifax Herald that's the same way. We've given them chapter verse, we've given them analysis, we've given them charts. Dead frigging silence. And so what are you going to do when it's when it's this colonial perspective 
that we are railing against because we're the only bigger uh, person that can stand up to the bullies or the centralization yeah. uh, phenomenon. We're all going to have to go over to talk to Ray Ivany right now. Exactly. <laughs> no, but Ray, That's you know, a... everybody I've talked to thinks this, this, this is just window dressing. Oh, I don't for think so. For the next so. election. Yeah. And if I get a chance to speak, I'm going to tell him that. I know Ray. I was very close to Ray. Oh, I was at the session in Pradoxbury yesterday. It's going to be very open. It's, it's a general dialogue tonight. So. How many people showed up? In Pradoxbury? Yeah. Uh, I think it was about 30, maybe a little bit more. Were there any good ideas? Oh, yeah. yeah. But here's the point. You cannot change an attitude by just complaining. You've got to have a long-term uh, offensive. Yep. Secondly, strategy. You cannot develop new economy without a coherent, sustained, organized, disciplined, safeguarded approach. Because every time, the people in Halifax will block anything they can. The one loophole we have now is the port. Yeah. And what are they saying? Oh, well, we'd be happy to cooperate with you. You bet. <clears throat> because if we get that, we're going to take either lunch. But the fact is that all these information technology efforts, Richards, uh, uh, not Doug, he wasn't in information technology, but BMP, all of these ones that hung in there, as the young man said, don't get local procurement, it all goes to some idiot who has lunch with the, the, the uh, bureaucrats in Halifax. Okay, so I was going to, I wanted to know, just building on Alan's <coughs> idea about bringing in some high-end speakers, and then the idea, we had, we used to have this conference, it was, what was his name that used to run it? He went to Kentville, JD, JD, JD yeah. Is there somewhere in that space, maybe it's not, well, obviously multimedia is gone, the BAMF, right? So is there somewhere else in this ICT sector that maybe annually we should try to uh, highlight and uh, maybe bring a, a sector component of ICT, knowledge-based innovation to, to Cape Breton on a uh, on an annual basis? You, or is that just a, a waste you, of time? You, you, you need a focus yeah, of some yeah. sort. and. Uh, I mean, maybe there is one, but everything's so kind of nascent and you know in different areas that I don't see a lot of focus yeah. for something like that. It was nice that I, I like the uh, digital media or whatever, uh, whatever. It was. Yeah, yeah I, I mean that was wonderful. It had a focus a and it was on a roll, but uh, I don't I don't see a focus myself. I, mean, I keep looking for one, but I don't see one. So right. I'm not sure that there's any low hanging fruit there, Keith. Sure, and that. Sorry, Eric, go well, ahead. Just from an adult education point of view, Keith. Yep. Uh, unless the local community, as a community, has its own strategy and is committed to that strategy and is passionate, like Ian and Doug and the other, are passionate about dealing uh, uh, with a positive strategy to bring about transformation of. Uh, of uh, actions that will consistently run counter to the well-being of this community, uh, nothing is going to happen. We are at war. From an attitudinal point of view, there is a war being raged here uh, against Cape Breton for some time. Everybody is so nice in Cape Breton, oh, they wouldn't think of the negative. Oh, they're there, they're they help us. I mean, this child one, I don't say it's child, strategies and the serious people who understand these issues have to be part of a large group with a strong executive to have a monthly meeting with an action plan and every month and there has to be a go for ahead, go forward adult go. community education program. Without it, get it. So that's good. But if we want to build this culture of entrepreneurism, a lot of it, the work was done by Paul and written out in the uh, book house yeah, in yeah. Um, But what we have is we have 15 years since that time. 
and the Cape Breton has changed, the world has changed, multimedia has changed. I think for the uh, short term, there's going to be companies hungry for multimedia. But now that the marketplace is all changed, and now you only have where once upon a time you had 50 players buying multimedia, well now you only have five major global players buying multimedia. Bell, from what I understand, is, is hungry for our content. And perhaps that, that is part of it. But it's just at a, a pure level of entrepreneurism and in innovation in kind of driving that, I think uh, developing that strategy would be an important first step. I think there's all kinds of work that has been done. It's almost like a lit review of like all of the, the past reports that have been done, yeah. all very good work. And I would say a lot of it is still applicable today. There's not a whole lot of rewriting of the of the wheel here, it's not rocket science. A lot of the, the work is, has already been done, the studies have been done, it's just putting it into place. So, Alan's, um, let me just, I've lost my train of thought, but we can get to the point. The point is, you on your website, I, by the way, I just found out you were streaming this, and I want to congratulate you, Bob. Well, I, I'll come, but I didn't realize it was being streamed. <laughs> I didn't know that either. So, I, we had them too when we were running the tags. Uh, there's a, a young man was speaking about a hackathon. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, I don't know what the the uh, community here of, of hackers. Of, oh, it's, it's not. I don't no, even think it's a hacker. It's just a. Developers. Yeah, yeah, right. just yeah, developers. developers. Yeah. I, know, I know what the real word is. Okay, sorry, sorry. I thought you meant like evil but black hats. Yeah. My, <laughs> feeling, my gut feeling is until they and other potential uh, startups can do what um, Protocase has done, which is leapfrog out of this province and establish relations with outsiders. Who will work with you because on the internet nobody knows you're a dog, yeah. um, and that that notion that they're not prejudiced against us, they won't take our ideas and turn it right around and give it to somebody down the street. Uh, and and I mean there were Cyan's and Nova Scotia. What was the other one? Cyan's uh, uh, Media Fusion. Yeah, and there was another. One. But these no were knowledge. Ah, no knowledge. No knowledge. Is it still going? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these were major initiatives that brought together people who were doing a lot. But the problem was that there was no attempt to get away from dependence on the, on the provincial government. And the provincial government was willing to pay for the luncheons in Halifax, but it wasn't uh, prepared to help market. Uh, the capabilities of local companies. Can I, can I make a comment on this, this thing? I, can you get the last slide up there, please? Man, look at that. Taxes and capital. This whole thing. One of the things that, that strikes me, we have this conversation about the government doing this, government doing that, and everything else. You know, government of Nova Scotia, so, which is broke, right? You know, like, you know we're broke, right? right? $200 million a year extra. And, every, every government yeah. is broke. No, but Nova Scotia is particularly broke, right? Because our base on a good day, we're 30% transfer payments, like we're a welfare base on a good day. Okay? So what's our government do? It spends $300 million on a pulp mill. No, no, 50 million on okay. pulp mill. Oh, you mean this? No, and the, the one up here, okay? You know, in the It's, it's 300 million, and we spent that much in Cisco, okay? And Sunset Industry, and I apologize to port fans around here, $40 million buried the trench in the harbor a couple of, or a year ago that probably won't be used for you know eternity. And if it's an old industry that has a smokestack attached to it, we have hundreds of millions of dollars to put at it, okay? Yeah. And, and if you are a, a vibrant, you know, young, growing industry, we have the country's highest taxes to throw at you. This is ass backwards. Okay? This is and, and this is so self-evident, folks. It's out there in front of you. This is not like a great insight or something like that. Okay? I look at this and I go, okay, startups, they cost nothing to support startups, right? But once a company's a startup, 
And if it can't uh, swim on its own, you've got to let it drown. Oh, yeah. Okay? And when your pulp mill can't make it, you've got to let it drown. Right? And for some reason, this problem is if you want to take anything to these damn people, taxes capital. Okay, you've all heard the fact that corporate tax collection in Atlantic Canada is less than the budget of a boa. Okay, anybody know that? So we tax all this money out of companies, successful companies, and basically then we got this other agency that takes more money than that and gives it to select losers. Handful of those startups, right? Most of it goes to select losers for like milk packaging machines and shit like this, right? And, and, and for pure bullshit, that's where it goes. It is sick. No, it's votes. It's not bullshit. No, it's not votes. No, 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 nobody votes. Nobody votes for this. Well, like, like, I don't know yeah, anybody that stands up and votes for that stuff. We're live streaming. <laughs> we don't yeah. have a delay. No, no, no. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you do this, you look at this, and you say, okay, so I go back to this, a strategy, Laura says we need a strategy, okay? Take your taxes, cut corporate tax to zero, okay? Why? It favors companies that are successful, okay? And of some of the money you saved by cutting a coal and all this other economic development bullshit, cut it to zero, you have money left over in the coffers at that point. Take some of it, put the startups. You know, and if you took a fraction of that money, you would do ten times the amount of money that goes to startups because your nothing goes to them. Okay. And that's the two places: startups yeah. and successful companies. Everything else, we need to let them die, right? And the pulp mill's got to die, right? I hate to say it, they got to die. City Steel had to die. It's too bad it had to die 25 years ago. We probably would have not had all our young people float away before we tried to go into recovery mode, right? It's got to happen. And I, I watch our new economic cycle, and I find it incredibly depressing. And at that point, I'm kind of saying, why do I come here and talk about this shit? Why don't I just check out of this? Because we can't help Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia will spend every tax dollar they have life-supporting dead industries, and they'll tax the shit out of everything that's vibrant. So one and, exciting thing that did happen this year was you, Don, set up a CDF. For three innovation startup companies, and they raised, uh, I think, 1.42. I'm familiar with that, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, is that, I wanted to get some feedback on that. So, is that something, is there enough investment out there to do that on an annualized basis? Or? Yeah, they got to be commended. Oh, I know, I know. That's brilliant. Had that been done years yeah. ago, a lot of companies would not be in positions exactly. that they are in, and, and it takes, you know, that's where is the growth that, is, the, is the that growth our money? opportunity? Is that the, our opportunity? Yes. To, okay. That's the growth money, right? Startups, getting somebody off the ground. No, they shouldn't invest in somebody the day they open their business. That's a nice place for the public sector to be. It's inexpensive, okay? And it's a little bit sort of scattershot. And, but when it comes to growing companies, getting real people with the real savings to invest and real organizations like that raising money, that's the way to do it. Yeah. And the government can give that hand up. And again, it costs a lot. That's the right place to get money. Okay? And it's not from a co op, and it's not from provincial bureaucrats and all the games you have to play and the consultants you have to hire to go, you know, schmooze people in Halifax. Yeah. It's not the right place. The New Dawn model, that's the model for growth. Startup, public sector. Growth, that. And then for uh, encouraging. Uh, vibrant, profitable companies, knock your tax rates down in a, re in a real manner. So well, how much capacity do you think we have in the Cape Breton area to, to channel into the CDFs? Is it, oh, I know, I know, but before we oversaturate, or I just wanted, or should we just or pick three companies a year, or? Uh, no, I do uh, not know that, uh, uh, but we know this, that uh, communities <coughs> or Far more than the okay. You know, my, my take There's on it, I hear the hundred million a year number. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, and, uh, I'm on the new on board, by the way. So. Okay. But two years ago, not this past year, I think it was two years ago, we knew Don had the highest seat, in, the highest amount of the race received in the province. Yeah. And it was two point four million dollars. And the challenge is that. You apply for it kind of in December time frame, is that right? And then they have to approve it before you can actually raise the money. So we only have like a month to do that. Oh, my. 
and we did it. So is that the so opportunity we should kind of tweak? Should we, is that something near term that could really, really help the Well, the I, think, I think, you know, it, the model is still being worked on. It's still early days. Yeah. I think, I think what New Dawn has proved is that we have the capacity to raise this kind of money locally yeah. and invest it locally. I don't think we have yet achieved the number that we are able to do if we were, if we were. Well, we have to have, uh, what he's making is very good uh, observation. Um, New Dawn uh, cannot do it unless this community has a strategy. What does it want okay, yeah. uh, to uh, get the local people to invest in developing their own community? There's got to be a strategy outside of New Dawn yeah. uh, that uh, really encourages people to understand that the future, in the first instance, depends upon the active citizens of this 100,000 uh, citizen community. And whether it's a 1,000 people who that core group, or uh, and uh, ten thousand that are supporters of the core group, uh, that's not small. That's a large group of people. They can transform this community in ten years. I'm just throwing that in the road there. Uh, to give you an idea, now, I've been thinking about this and working on this through uh, the New Dawn Seal yep. uh, for ten years. Okay, and we're just. Uh, going about it uh, slowly and uh, we have learned a lot uh, but I think the time has come. Uh, I didn't come here to say this at all. <laughs> That's okay. All right. That's, that's great. Yeah, I know, the the point if I can summarize that, so far from the market saturation, yeah. like not even close, this is a little yeah. effort by a yeah, volunteer yeah. board and with a month, with itself, like a month like, like, like to scratch the surface of that stream of $100 million a year that flows off island, right? George, you wanted to jump in, and then I'll move on. What I want to say is that I, I, all those all those ideas we hear here, you know, they're all good ideas in all good points. But uh, all the points of the side, as bad as the taxes are and everything else is not good. Um, there is there is some support here for startups that you probably don't find in other places. I mean, it sounds it sounds ridiculous, but but you know, like yeah, being delivering a vehicle from all across Canada. There are some, some communities that do not have a CBDC. That's not available to them. But they're always bigger. They, they have more than 100,000 people and they don't have a CBDC. So if you're a small, you know, if you're a small startup, they don't have any CBDC. There's no CBDC. But where do you go? You go to drive with them and get an only Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. You know, I mean, that's, you know, like, you, you look at drive with them, how terrible the feedback they get. It's oh, a yeah. very good idea. So this is my car. It's very really simple. They won't go down to CBDC to look at the money. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, uh, but uh, what, what I think the challenge is, and, and, like, once you get a certain level, how do you go to the next level? Some companies like product cases have done this very well. Yeah. So that's an exception. Right? I mean, how do you go to the next level? Like, the Paul Easton guys, they invented that idea. They had a great idea here. You know, they had to go to Halifax, basically, to go to the next level. You know, like, uh, Bill McMullen with Info Interactive, he had a great idea here. How fast get to the next level? And those were the two. Well, why? Why did they move to Halifax? Well, I was the first Bill was <laughs> Everybody here mentioned those reasons. Yeah. What, what, reasons. Why did they move to Halifax? Sorry. I don't know exactly. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that it had uh, some decent uh, public sector money, which is many times easier. When I started up, I had the good folks from Bob's employer. Uh, came along and said, well, shit, if you move yourself up to our incubator here in Dartmouth, we got all this money for you. And uh, I think I ended up with zero money out of them because I decided not to take their offer. And I think that's a big part of it. And I look at the rest of it, and, and look, and I go with that and say, yeah, we got ECBC, we got this and that. If I'm in Boston and I want to do a startup, I can go to Cambridge, and I got an incubator full of vibrant people, excited about what they're doing, I'm caught up in their whole surge of moving along there, and I'm caught in a whole network of people, and the money's private money. There's no shortage of private money in this community. There's no shortage of it. There's a total shortage of confidence, because in this community, when you want to start something up, you say, you've got to go ask for that grant from ECDC, rather than going out there and doing what you should do, which is to say, i got to find some private investors because they're going to sell something to make some money for somebody, and we're totally caught up in that paradigm. And, and going to Halifax is just competition for a little bit more public money. Saying also, the next point is there's no other jurisdiction that has city. 
Glass is beautiful. 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 ICD and then all kinds of the corporates, for example. Any, yeah. you know, cities that understand ICD and understand high tech. I mean, that's something that, I mean, that's what Silicon Valley has, but there's how many Silicon Valley are out there. Yeah. You can't make them overnight. You know, so yeah. that's basically what it is now. Are you, can you speak to critical mass and what you're doing? I mean, critical mass as a it's an intermediate goal in your strategy, right? Is to try to get critical mass. And what Aura spoke about the critical mass. You will not get a critical mass. You <coughs> talk about these things in a public way. Uh, what I'm saying is to initiate to, to initiate uh, a, a, a group, a community activity to create a critical mass. You need a strategy. To attract people to come to meetings around the development of the strategy, and that lead, one thing leads to the next, and you will have a dynamic group, a core group of people who will liberate uh, those billions of dollars in this community that are at the present time dead money because there is no hope here because the local local people refuse to provide the hope, and the other people are happy and gleeful that we remain dead and dormant and refuse to provide the hope. That's the situation. Let me ask so, uh, when you and Lily were considering the business model for projects, you had to have an understanding of the process you were about to embark upon, that is the startup, but also you had to have an awareness of the market, the potential, the need, and whether there was a need and how you would access it. Now that was, as I recall, there was a disciplined approach that you followed to sort those things through. And it wasn't until you had satisfied yourself that you actually were able to convince investors to participate both in advanced glazing as well as in um, sprawl case. I, I don't agree completely that this, problem, this community is unsympathetic or unsupportive of startups. What I think of is they're ignorant, and I don't I mean that in a, just a neutral way. That is, you have to understand this. When you go to Silicon, uh, Silicon, uh, Silicon Valley, I was going to say Silicon Island, uh, when you go to Silicon Valley, or you go to the, the roundabout, uh, Route 28 or whatever it is in Boston, there are entire networks of people who know how to get the information about whether a, a business can address a need that will go through the whole business of 100 to 1 from ideas to actual sales. There, and what was the name of that book about making technology happen? Remember he, the, the guy who came here to a tag meeting? Yep. Yep. And it's a very systematic, very organized approach. If there isn't a critical mass of people who understand that approach and are prepared to follow it, I mean, it's hopeless. I spent eight years studying the process of making community economic, local economic health work. I wrote a book. I mean, it probably is the least influential book ever written on any <laughs> subject. Okay? I still had boxes of them that never sold. I'll read one of your past <laughs> that's, actually, that's we're going to have a draw for our book. The reality is, is there is a process, and you have to understand it. It's like anything else. You don't do brain surgery by talking about the need to understand people's feelings. You do it because you know the technology, you know the, the, the diseases, the dysfunctions, and you know the procedure. And that's what we haven't promoted. And I have beat on Cape Coast until I am, my hands are bloody, and they are opaque because for some reason they're they're answering to a different drummer. Now, Bob, let me ask you a question. You are employed by a provincial agency in Ovacore, but the question is: Is there a way? I remember when the Ovacore was started a 
Curry was the one who was involved in getting it going. There was a point that the value of InnovaCore was that it could help people who were considering starting a new business, applying a new technology, whatever. It could help them not only develop their process, to perfect it, but also to bring customer, potential customers and to explore the prospective customer. Is that still a, um, a supported service? Yes, but the focus has changed from providing that support broad-based to finding the best companies, investing, and supporting those. So it, it's gone from a broader base of support to a very, very narrow base. But what if we don't have enough little startup, potential startups, to to focus on? Yeah. In other words, the, this hackathon. They're, they're happy to ignore that fact. Uh, I, I've spoken to their uh, folks from president to chairman and all that kind of stuff, and they're happy to ignore that. And they're they're, they're good. And, and don't forget. Novacorp, and with the utmost respect to Bob, uh, Novacorp was, uh, the reason it was founded is because it had Nova Scotia Research Foundation. Yeah, 14 million. And, right, and, and the, roots, the, the roots go back to World War II, and we had National Research Council and then Ontario, <laughs> an Ontario model with, with ORF. And at a certain point, everyone came to the conclusion that NRC's Montreal Road thing and ORF and Mississauga and the bunker in Dartmouth were unproductive. And had a lot of people who would have had, had to have pink slips. They had to find another reason for them to be. And they went on a mission, which was a good mission. But the reason for going on the mission was to avoid pink slips. Well, whether that's so or not, I, we, we used to talk about embedded technology, embedded devices. We talked about multimedia. We talked about uh, software design. And now you call, you talk about apps. And or the hackathons or whatever they call it. But the point is, there are opportunities out there and there are young people who would respond to uh, stimulation and reinforcement to the point where a few of them would become Steve Manleys, who are making money by developing uh, software technology for Har Harley Davidson. I mean, who would have thunk Harley Davidson would be buying software technologies developed in Cape Breton? He doesn't talk about it, but he's got a job out there. It's all market drive. It's all market drive and business. Yeah, you're going to be successful. It's going to be market drive. Absolutely. And you know what? You're not getting a market. You know where you get market drive from? Uh, Steve and I, in enclosures, because I used to cut the damn things myself. I had personal pain. The easiest way to start a business <laughs> is to feel personal pain, right? And you can act. You understand. You understand how to talk to the people you're selling to. You understand their needs. You can and make your offering right for them and everything else, and it's got to come from market drive, and that's the problem. And in the Canadian, Atlantic Canadian approach to uh, trying to do innovation, it really misses the point. And it's more than even market knowledge. Uh, when I spent a week down MIT in their course down, on an entrepreneurship course down there, uh, late in my entrepreneurial career at that, one of the things I most I was most impressed with down there was one of the guys down there, Ken, oh God, he's the guy who runs the program down there. And he said, when somebody comes and says, do you want to invest in my business? He says, who's your first uh, customers? And they go, well, everybody that does this and this and this. No, no, he says, give me the names that what 10 people you can go sell to. Okay? Because in business, we don't see businesses that fail around here because they couldn't make their product. Okay, and uh, it's not the problem. And they can't sell it again and again and again. It's all got to start from market focus. And again, if you want a market focus, as I said, that whole thing of trying to, you know, who's going to fund the thing? If you want to go out there and, and if you can't sell the investment to people, what's the odds you can sell a product to somebody? It's all selling. And you need some the people driving the thing. have to be people that understand selling and understand who a customer is. If somebody has money in their pocket and is willing to buy, and you got a group of them. You got to understand that. And that is totally missed. Well, zero, zero. We can have that conversation. Yeah. I mean, that, that's. Here's the use. I need to wrap up. Let me one comment on ECDC. Okay. When you're a successful company, the, our bank line of credit cost is 3.2 percent. I can go to ECDC and spend 20 times management focus to do a deal and get zero percent. There's no use to a profitable company for ECDC. 
They may have a role in startups, but they don't care to do that. They'd rather be two million dollar milk machines for zero percent instead of three point two. Okay, no use to them. Zero, nothing in building the economy. Here we go. So, thanks everybody. I didn't mean to cut it off, but I just have to get to the next slide, which is just our next steps. And I really appreciate everybody's input. There's Really, I'm going to go back and prioritize some of this, and uh, I think I'm going to send out a little survey just to uh, substantiate it. But I think capital seems to be something that's ongoing, right? It's an ongoing, long-term issue that we can we can keep tackling, right? Short-term, there's two snippets that Ian's brought up about that we have to have Nova Scotia investing in Nova Scotia companies when there's an opportunity, right? So that's something that shouldn't be all that difficult, but I know you. <laughs> it shouldn't well, be. I would have three it shouldn't years. be. I'll it see shouldn't. You. I know it shouldn't be. Happen. I know. Not gonna uh, we have the air issue, but that air issue is pan sector. Every sector that is every sector we've had from engineering, environmental, to ice or to uh, clean tech to whatever it is, it's always there in one, two, three, because you need to have what. Uh, Matthew Giorgio, two, one stop over, you got a good shot, two, you're pretty much at the game, three, nobody's coming to see it, right? And especially at those prices, so that's something we'll have to continue looking at. And the opportunity is, we've had success with the seed of model here, how can we build on that success? And I think that's a real near-term one that, you know, maybe, I don't know how long it would take to kind of change the uh, policies and procedures around the seed of model, but we have a concerted effort and try to broaden that investment window at least. Um, maybe we can see much more uh, investment flow through. So those are some of the themes I think that were really high level and prevalent. Everybody seemed to be shaking, nodding at. Uh, what I'm going to do is take that and uh, and do a little white paper, nothing robust, but you know, one, two page and we'll get it back to everyone for some comment and go from there. And the goal from there is basically to take on Aura's challenge and really put a long-term strategy, but not take months and months to develop a strategy. We basically have all the components here in the room where we've talked about challenges and opportunities and now we just got to figure out how to address them. So one of the things we're going to do right away and hopefully announce at the next, uh, by next month at the next Tech Social is to put the sector team together uh, that would meet and advise and move this forward with uh, support from the Cape Rat Partnership um, so that we can advance all of the things we're talking about today and address those challenges we talked about. Um, so we're going to be looking for volunteers. I'm not going to put anybody on the spot. You could, everybody knows how to get there, but I did want to know who should be on this before we kind of formulate it. Should be totally private sector driven? Should we have some public sector partners, NGOs on there? Uh, what would be a good format for this? We're thinking about, you know, nine people tops, seven to nine. Um, what should be the private sector, uh, non-private sector makeup be? Just some thoughts on that. Just some idea, yeah, just what's... I'll tell you right now who you should not have. Okay, that's that's on there too. Who shouldn't be there? <laughs> it's, not, it's not going to do with private sector, public sector, academic sector, or anything else. Yep. It has to be people who cannot divorce themselves from using the, the discussion for their own self-interest. Okay. It has to be, I mean, remember Cape Breton Community Net? I mean, we have people coming in there deliberately because they figured they could steer the, 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 the answers so they can make money on it. And they, they actually did it. They okay. sabotaged it. Missed all that. No, you missed all that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, young, yeah. <laughs> so you must not have people who are plants. Yeah. Whether they're plants representing an organization, plants representing the government, yeah. or plants representing a, a, a destructive view, I hear you. a competitor's view. You've got to have people who really are there, who hang up their personal issues outside the door and come in there ready to uh, freely discuss ideas and to analyze possibilities without bias. You've yeah. got to have that. If, and, and we don't have that. We have people, we have the same 
cast of characters being appointed to to so commissions me. and government reviews. I mean, Teresa Meal is at the top of the list. Oh, she was Ray on the top Anthony's of her list. Up there. <laughs> I mean, the point is, they are useless. They are sabotaged. They may be very nice people. They may be very experienced people. But the fact of the matter is, they are not speaking on behalf of the good of the community. Okay. And that's what you need. And yeah. by the community, I mean the community of interest. Yep, yep. Thanks, Paul. I wonder, Keith, could you speak to like what is envisioned for the structure of that panel? Like, if you had seven people in a room on that panel, what are their roles? Like, do they to ensure really have a, a focus or like it? Do you have, like a vision there. He's volunteering. I can tell he's playing that. <laughs> well, I, have, I do have somewhere where I'm going with this, but if, I'd like to hear. Just to make sure that the discussion we're having today is advanced. Yeah. No, that's sufficient. Because yeah. I see something like So where, otherwise, where, you're just going to, I don't want to have a bunch of private sector folks and we're going to be sitting around talk public sector folks to sitting around, okay, what program should we develop and we'll get there or whenever. It has to be, okay, here's, you know, we listed some priorities, narrow those down and you make sure that those are, we're banging on those priorities and challenges until they're gone. Yeah. So I you're see, like, in like, the room today, like something that I, I see, in, you know, I certainly get interested and passionate and excited about the big picture challenges or strategies yep. that can help take the whole sector forward. Before I came here today and when we're in the room we're talking about all these things, I thought more of a real practical day-to-day -day things that we can do as a group to advance, help one another's companies move forward. Mm -hmm. So we, we talked a lot about Go market type things today. We talked about how to get a company, how to get revenue straight. You know, we talked about funding and we talked about capital or barriers, but, but like sales. How do we help one another position our companies in a better way, sell better, take products from Cape Breton, sell them to the rest of the world? To me, that seems like a reasonable group that could come together under the guise of this committee and it's people like Doug, it's people you know like our company where we've had success, we've had failures, yep. you know we're coming together as a group to be able to talk about well you know, what worked for Mercado, what did, what's Mercado doing in the next six months to try to market the Germany or sell in Germany yep. and how can other companies come in and work together just on that real practical level when we're all faced with, you know, we all got revenue targets to hit every month, or we all, um, you know, how are we going to get there? How are we going to do it? That to me seems like a reasonable thing that's on, you know, under maybe the guise of that panel and that your organization could help support, you yep. know, whether it's meeting space or, you know, sandwiches, I don't know. Yeah, the sandwich. They're sandwich, right? They're sandwich, but I'm just talking about practical. <laughs> Day-to-day -day sales fundamental drinks free. No, no, no drink money. Kind of just stuff, <laughs> not enough on the higher yeah. level of Kool Aid. You know, that's what I. That's what I. You know. okay, thanks, Larry. For sure. And I have one last favor to ask everyone. We have this little survey, and before you go, hopefully you can fill it out. It's for an I, uh, a sector company. I can't say who, but you can probably guess who it is once you fill it out. It's just a few questions on. Uh, training. I'll just leave it at that. But anyway, I'll hand those out. I'll bring them back. I'll have a synthesis document uh, put together and get back to you right away. And then uh, anyone who is wanting to volunteer and assist in moving this forward through the panel, or the through the team, please get a hold of me and uh, I'll do a quick, can I do a quick report back next Absolutely. month? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, sure. But not, not on another big form, but just a... Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And we, we really can. appreciate everybody's time and input, and and uh, we'll get back to you, okay? And if not, we have that panel team to say we're not doing a good job. So. <laughs> anyway, thanks again. And everyone should move over and talk to Ray Ivany once we're done. <laughs> thanks very much, Keith. No thanks, thanks again to uh, to Keith, and thanks to our sponsors this evening, Member Free Trading Convention Center and an open court for providing the food. Uh, we'll, we'll shut down the webcast and uh, continue on with our door prizes and
couple of uh, quick announcements. Uh, Next Tech Social is May 2nd. Um, just putting that together now. Uh, watch your inbox for the, the, the topic and the invite. Uh, a couple of events that are coming up. The, the hackathon is, uh, has a tentative date. Uh, it's the, I believe it's uh, May 20th, but that happens to be the Saturday of the long weekend. So it, that may change. So I'm just waiting to get confirmation on the date. And finally, uh, any good I'm, developer doesn't worry about long weekends. <laughs> well, I know, but you know, you have to. You want to really entice them. So, um, and the final is uh, there's a, an event coming this way called Pitch 101. It's to help um, individuals and organizations work on and perfect their elevator pitch. Uh, it can be business enterprises or social enterprises. And again, there'll be more information coming on that as well. So. Uh, watch, watch your email. Thanks again, and thanks for coming.